Well, praise the Lord, everyone. Welcome back to End Time Generation. Uh, you know, a lot's been happening since the solar eclipse on April 8th. And here we are. Today is day 41. And I just wanted to get on here and I wanted to talk about a little bit of what's been going on in the headlines. But I want my guest introduce himself. Go ahead, brother. My name's Gary, and I'm with Not So Random. Uh, on YouTube, and uh, we're just trying to spread uh, kindness here in the final hour. Amen. Yeah. And, you know, I think it's important, as we learned from last week's program, that we look for the opportunity, because God is speaking to us. God is always trying to get our attention, because he wants to work through us. And God will work through anybody who makes themselves available. And that's the key. Be available. And when God moves on you, respond. God likes those first responders. You know, sometimes wow. we say, well, I think I should. And that's God. But then we talk ourselves out of it. And what we're actually doing is we're talking ourselves out of a blessing because we don't know whose lives that we can affect with our testimony and like we were talking last week sometimes we may you know judge somebody so well, no they don't want you know they may not want it oh no they don't look like they would or no that not that person but you never know and i was just telling uh the brother before uh we came on the program how you know god used me today to witness to a man who was a backslider and god set up the perfect situation for us to meet and you know i'm not going to get into this man's you know business and stuff like that because what he told me you know that's between me and him and the lord but he was hungry and it reminded me how you know brother god leaves the 99 and he goes after that one and you know in that story the prodigal what did it say that when he saw his son afar off he ran to him fell on his neck and kissed him, gave him the fatted calf, put a robe around his neck and a ring on his finger. And they threw a party because his son who was dead is alive and made it home. And, and that's what it's all about, making yourself available. And to God be all the glory because, you know, I was just praying, Lord, help me to cast my net Help me to cast it farther, you know, and I have to clean out the clutter in the net. You know, that's one of the things that the fishermen did. They would mend the nets. They would tie the, the you know, the broken nets and they would get all the clutter, the seaweed, and they get all the things out of the net. So that way, when they cast their net, they could catch a lot of people. And sometimes, you know, we need to get the clutter out of our net because God wants to use us. And if we just make ourselves available, if we'll just take the time and say, you know, yes, I could go here and I could do this, but I'm just going to wait on the Lord and I'm going to let God use me. And, you know, he, he will. He will use you if, if, we, if you make yourselves available. Mm -hmm. So definitely you got anything you want to, you know, add to that or you want to just move I on? Like, or, I like how you I like. No, I like how you called it. First responders. God likes first responders. Yes. And uh, because we, even with our children, and, and you know, I mean, if a person's quick, you know, to help somebody or in, or in the case with your children, if they're quick to, before you can even utter it out, they're already doing what you asked. I mean, isn't that a miracle if that was to ever happen? But, you know, before you could even say, go clean your, they're already in their room, they're already starting on it. Uh, or they know you're about to ask that and they're already working on it. Now that's true obedience, but mm -hmm. the child that's like pitches a fit. I don't want to, I, da, da, and then they finally do it. And then they look at you like they've done something good. And in reality, I mean, uh, no, you didn't. You, you disobeyed me by being slow to act. Mm -hmm. And I don't right. want to disobey God to be slow to act, you know? Right. But, uh, Absolutely. Definitely, definitely don't want to get to heaven and think of all the missed opportunities. You know, uh, want to definitely be found faithful. You know, right? And you know, it's 
like at times I've done that where, you know, I felt the Lord say, hey, go pray for that person. But I was ashamed to. I was afraid of what someone might think. Or I was afraid, okay, God, well, if I go pray and you don't show up or you don't, you know, do something for that person, I was worried about how I would look. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not the one that heals anybody. That That's God's business. It's my job just to be his hands. It's my job to lay hands on them and pray for them. And I got to remember, it's not about me. And we're human, though, you know, and we do do that. And we I don't think we intentionally do that. But there's just something about, you know, not responding when God wants you to. And sometimes maybe God doesn't even want you to really go pray for that person or give that person money. He just wants to see if you would do it. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. and, and, I, and I don't know. I, I don't know. What do, you, what do you think about that? Uh, I've been in situations like that, you know, um, uh, I've had God take me on a journey and, you know, to see if I'll do something. And there's some times where I don't, and then there's times where I have, and then there's been times where it was definitely a test. I remember one time in particular, God's like, turn around, go to this particular gas station. I didn't need gas, but the Lord's like, go to this gas station. And I'm assuming to go bless like an a you know, gas station attendant or somebody or person in a car. I wasn't sure. I pull up and the Lord's like, I was just saying what kind of man you are. You don't have to do anything. Thank you. You know, mm. and that that's the first time that's ever happened. Usually there's a <laughs> there's a direction right. of what to do once you're there. But uh, it was kind of like the Abraham with his son. You know, the there was already a ram and didn't need to sacrifice. But it was just the idea. You willing to go up to a mountaintop and he's going to see how far you'll go. You know, he don't want to mm -hmm. kill that boy. He was wanting to see how obedient he'd be. And he had a plan right. before that was even a, you know, he was even up there that there would be a sacrifice and he wouldn't have to do uh, the unheard of and, and sacrifice his own son, you know? Mm -hmm. and, you know, and I, and I've just, I've learned over the years from doing outreach that God will go, through great lengths and he will do the oddest things just to reach somebody. You know what I mean? And oh, yeah. it, it, it is always, it's not always the way we think it should happen. And, you know, it, I just find it amazing because, you know, had I left, had I been selfish, had I been, Oh, I just want to get home, you know, and I want to get something to eat. And I, you know, there's things I wanted to do and I had to do, but had I not have, you know, taken the time and been obedient, that man, I w we never would have been able to meet and, and you know what I'm saying? And, and he, it was just, I'm just thankful that, you know, I wasn't so too busy to allow God to use me. So, you know, to God be all the glory today for that, because I'm telling you, it was definitely a, a divine appointment. But I did want to get into some uh, prophecy real quick here because um, for those of you who know, this is day 40 from the solar eclipse that happened on May 8th. Now, I've never said, I'm going to put a disclaimer here. I never said one time that the rapture is going to take place on Pentecost, which is tomorrow, the 19th of May. Never said that. And, you know, you always get those people, well, you said, you know, the rapture was going to come and you said, thus saith the Lord. No, I never said, not on this program, not on someone else's program that I've been on. I've never said that the rapture will take place. I hope it will. I'm all for it if it does, but I don't know. I don't know when the rapture is going to happen. Quite frankly, I wish I did, but I don't, sorry, except for that it's going to happen in a moment in a twinkling of an eye and at the last Trump. That's all I can tell you. But I, I don't know when the rapture is going to take place. Now, that said, um, the whole day 41 incident um, that we talk a lot about here, not on just this program, but on Departure Heaven, and uh, Bob Barber has made some videos on it as well, that there has been patterns throughout the word of God where there has been 40 days, and then on day 41, something takes place. Like, for instance, um, Jesus 
was fasting for 40 days. And then on day 41, he defeated the devil. And, mm -hmm. you know, Goliath, he taunted Israel for 40 days. Give me a man. Give me a man. And day 41, a little shepherd boy showed up with some five uh, smooth stones and slew Goliath on day 41. And, and that's just a couple to show that there is a 40 day pattern and then something takes place on day 41 and brother today is day 40. Could it be today is the final day for our nation to repent. And the reason, the reason why I say that is because there's headlines here. I'm going to pull this one up. This um, headline says Russia prepares for war with NATO. And now there was another headline, which I should have pulled it up, but I don't have it, that Russia was firing from a submarine some rockets off the coast of San Diego while there are military exercises uh, taking place. So we could be seeing something getting ready to happen. Like I said, this war, this article is out of uh, War News 24-7. Uh, and then Zelensky, he blasts the West for wanting the conflict to end. So there's a lot going on right now, and there's possible war that can take place on multiple fronts. Um, Israel, like I said, Russia, possible China can take Taiwan. North Korea is test firing some more missiles. So there's a lot of articles, there's a lot of headlines out there that are pounding the drums of war. And Jesus said that there'd be wars and rumors of wars. But I don't know, brother, what do you think? Do you think, you know, possibly something could happen being that, you know, if God has given us 40 days to repent, mm -hmm. could something possibly maybe happen on day 41? I mean, what do you think? It's like we could feel the noose tightening around us. You know, mm -hmm. we could feel the... the uh, Stage is being set, you know. It's kind of like when there's a concert and they have to set the stage, you know. And it might take days and a lot of traveling to get to a place to set things up. And, you know, there's a lot of behind the scenes that goes into making an event take place. Well, it's like everything's kind of converging, you know. I think mm -hmm. that's a word that, that it's all kind of coming together. And, you know, there's never been a time in our history, you know, being a right. you know like you 80s child uh where yeah. we could look around at the news headlines and think man lord where are you at you know because never seen this many things coming together before and here we are you know and it's like uh, whether you want to think it's a 40 41 day window and the eclipse was the uh you know kind of like the bookmark so to speak of of a line in the sand that's been drawn and here we are uh, at the end of it and tomorrow could be something you know or the days following very possibly you know I, i'm not going to you know go on to uh, go on a internet show and say yeah the lord's coming back tomorrow uh go ahead and eat all what you want tonight clean out the refrigerator and just have you a big old time because tomorrow you know your money's going to be worthless because you're going to be in heaven you know uh, get that loan while you can and, you know, have fun while you can. I ain't going to say that. Me and my wife joke sometimes, you know, and, and it's like we always have a an ending statement to whatever plans we make. Well, if we're still here, you know, well, mm -hmm. we'll go out for anniversary if, if we're still here, you know. And, um, I mean, everything's pointing to it, you know, that if it's not the rapture, there's going to be some pretty – hellacious things going to start going on and we may have to endure some not saying a tribulation but just saying hey the holocaust was something some people had to endure you know um, wars uh, bad times depression uh, here we are looking at a depression i mean mm -hmm. who's to say what might happen this week you know will we still be here if it's bad enough i mean maybe the lord will 
you know, show it may be part of the uh, tribulation starting and, and we definitely need to be out of the equation. But some things I don't think it's going to be an on off switch of sorts. I don't think it's we leave and then boom, everything just goes into place somewhat, maybe. But I think we're going to inch along a little bit and start to feel and see and endure some things, not tribulation, but just kind of like uh, a John the Baptist. You're experiencing John the Baptist before you experience Jesus. You know, he's just a forerunner. I think we're going to experience a lot of forerunner type things. Lord knows 2020 was a forerunner for something. Yeah. Uh, you know, and the powers that be, they know who will be the the bad one and who's going to be the good one to deal with if there's ever a situation like that happen again. Uh, you know, but I just think that there there is something in the air. Something's going on. It's too right, many absolutely. things. Too many coincidental things going on right now, and that's why you need to be found faithful and busy. Uh, when you were talking a minute ago with all those things that you know happened and that crazy day you've had where it just kind of everything kind of fell in place with that guy you're talking to, uh, mm -hmm. Mark sixteen twenty says, and they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following, you know, I mean, you just had, you, you had to go forth. You had to be, you have, we have to be a people that are going forth, which means we're not just sitting on our blessed assurance, you know, watching, you know, YouTube and, and trying to pinpoint a date of departure. Uh, you know, there's some packing that needs to happen and not material things, but people are we packing for this trip, you know, are we packing the individuals, you know, to go with us right. and make sure they got their tickets and they're going to be ready at a certain time and all that to go. I mean, that's where we're needing to be, you know, right. uh, I hear all aboard, you know, I mean, uh, does that mean we're going today or tomorrow? Could be, could be not, but are we still going to be faithful at the end of the day? Are we going to still be faithful? Um, because if we put our hopes up in a, in a date, you know, mm -hmm. and a day comes and goes, we're going to be disappointed. Right. But if, but if we're excited to work in work for the Lord, whether here or there, we're, we're going to be content, you know, and we need to learn how to be content with much and little, just like, you know, Paul, you know, but, um, but we need to, do the work and then guess what those signs will follow like it did for you today you know absolutely you know and here's the thing you, that conversation if we're like i said on a video on my channel just the other day god just directed to kind of had my own little monologue my little thing i was talking about with with the rapture and one of the things he he, he told me was don't be discouraged if he doesn't come back today because there might have been somebody you needed to witness to. Right. You know, because here's the thing if, if, if the rapture is getting held up because somebody's right there on the edge of coming to him, by all means, let's wait for him. I'm going I'm to, I'm going to work until I hear the whistle, you know. Right. And, you know, that's, the, that's just the kind of the mindset we need to have. And I think we're getting so heavenly minded at times, we, we become no earthly good. And, uh, right. And, and the Lord wants us to be our earthly good because we're an ambassador. You know, right. uh, if heaven has a Yelp page or a uh, uh, travel travelocity page or something, you know, we're giving so many bad reviews to heaven because people are judging heaven on the way we act. You know, well, yeah. I'm going to go on Yelp and I'm going to give old God a bad review because that Dustin, you know, he he is supposed to met with me today and he missed it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't want that. <laughs> so there's those divine appointments, you know, right. that we have. We we ain't been called home yet. We're still breathing. Absolutely. So if it ain't through the grave or through the sky, so to speak, uh, we still got to report to work tomorrow, you know. So right. that's okay, you know. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And believe me, I'm not downplaying heaven at all. I mean, shoot, 
you know, uh, what was that movie? Still Magnolias, that old lady's like, well, as soon as my body gives out, the better off I'll be, you know? Well, mm -hmm. there's a little truth in that. She's being smart, Alec, but there's a little truth in that. But, uh, you know, I hate it for my children and, you know, the two or three people in my life that, that happen to like me a little bit, you know. Uh, guinea pig probably wouldn't get fed tomorrow if I died today. But anyway, you know, <laughs> there's a reason why we're here, you know. And right. Uh, so, hey, if I could be on that side of glory, believe me, I'd be first in line, you know. Absolutely. But, but if we're still down here having to work for God, bless God, we're, we're still able to work for God. He He's in charge of everything. You know what? So. Yeah, you know, I mean, I think it's important to be watchful and to oh, yeah. look. There's a reward for those who diligent, absolutely. diligently seek him. But, you know, there's a lot of people that do put all their eggs in one basket, so to speak. They put everything in this date and then they'll put everything in the next date if that previous date doesn't pan out. And, you know, I used to get really upset and I used to think to myself, you know, all these people who put okay, this is the day it's going to happen. And they say, thus saith the Lord or the Lord showed me. But if the Lord showed you and it was truly the Lord that showed you, then it would have happened. You know what I'm saying? But then they always go back and they're like, well, hmm, let me see. I forgot to, uh, you know, add two solar eclipse, carry the blood moon. I forgot to, um, you know, and, carry, carry, the, carry the one, you know. Right. Uh, and then they, they always find their mathematical malfunction mm -hmm. <laughs> after the date that they set that they said 100 percent i've always here i've always said this and and i know well that takes the fun out of a, a a you know doing a video like this but my thing is i i believe god is specific i right. think he has showed himself that he is a very organized person he you know he he's got a way that ain't our ways but he you could tell there's a mathematical way he does things Mm -hmm. And I think af after the rapture and after the fact, yes, you could definitely go back and see, oh, yeah, that coincided with right. the and the sky and this, that, and the other. You'll be able to figure it out. But doing your math problems like common core math with Jesus, show your work, it's very difficult, you know. Right. Right. Uh, you could give educated guesses, yes, and I believe I believe that's fine. Like I've heard, uh, uh, you know, Robert Breaker say when he was talking about some dates and things, and just mm -hmm. he says it's just a fun Bible study. You know, it's interesting. It's it's something to look into, and it's okay to be so anxious for heaven. You're almost wanting to, you know, kind of figure it out, but you know, it's a mystery. You know, it's the right. greatest riddle ever. You know, mm -hmm. and. Uh, you'll be able to figure out that Rubik's cube way before you could probably figure out where the Lord's coming back. You know? I think though, before, in my opinion, God told, okay, how do I say it? I think what's going to end up happening. And in my opinion is the day of the rapture, those people who are going to go, they'll know that today's the day. There'll be something in them they'll know. I mean, God gave them the day when Lot was coming, you know, he said, get out. The angels went in there and they had to carry Lot out, you know, so they knew the day that it was Lot, uh, Sodom and Gomorrah was going to be destroyed. And Noah, he knew the day, you know, because God spoke to him and told him in it, and it, and it was very obvious, you know, with the signs of the animals walking in two by two. And, and it doesn't take a rocket science. Okay, well, those are the last of the animals, so there's no more animals. And then when the door shuts from within, you know, it's kind of like, oh, okay, well, then this is it. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So I think as that day approaches, on that day, I think we will know. I really do. We may not know now. But, you know, another thing is I always hear a lot of people say, well, not even Jesus knows. Folks, listen, when Jesus said that he doesn't know the day or the hour, he was talking from his humanity. God was in Christ. Jesus was fully God and fully man. When Jesus said, I don't know the day or the hour, it was the humanity side talking with him or talking with the people. God put limitations on his flesh. Now, let me explain. 
That's why Jesus got tired. That's why Jesus was hungry. That's why Jesus was being was able to be crucified. Okay, he was flesh. He was fully man. Yeah. As and he went God, through temptation. He went through temptation. Right. And he temptation, but as he, right, he and as God, he with anything, but you know what I mean. Right. He was able. But as to God, he walked on water. He fed five thousand uh, men, not including women and children. He opened blind eyes, and when you understand that Jesus, according to Revelation one eight, God, Jesus is God Almighty. God is all knowing. Of course, Jesus knows when He's going to return. Okay, Jesus isn't sitting up there in heaven on a, a throne next to the Father, and the Father saying, well, "Any day now, Jesus, you can go get your, you know, your bride." And, and that's the mentality people have. Okay, but that's not how it is. Jesus knows when Jesus is going to return and come back for his church. He's almighty God. He knows all things. Okay. So, you know, and I, and I never understood why people continue to still to this day say, well, no, Jesus don't even know when he's going to return. Oh, yes, he does. He's God almighty. You cannot be all knowing and not know when you're going to return. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just, it's common sense, folks. But yeah, you know, I just wanted to, you know, touch up on that because there are a lot of people right now setting dates, putting all their eggs in one basket, saying God told them 100% that this is the day and then tomorrow is going to be the day and then another day is going to be the day. But they never, the people who follow these people never stop to think when they say the words God told them. And it doesn't happen. Why do these people still continue to follow these people? It's like the blind guy leading the blind. They're both going to fall into a ditch. You know what I'm saying? The Bible says test the spirits, whether they be of God or not. And the thing is, is a lot of people say, thus saith the Lord. And the Lord didn't say they prophesy lie instead of prophesy. You know what I'm saying? And they do that and they don't test the spirit because their flesh likes it. Why would they test the spirit? I remember one time I went to a church and this lady was in the uh, pew in front of us. And I know how messages in the church operate. It's usually a tongues, a message in tongues, and then there'll be an interpretation, right? Well, this lady, she comes out and she's like, oh, thus saith the Lord, this, 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 and this. And then she says all these things. And then at the very end, she's like, oh, wait. And before I forget, thus saith the Lord, like thus, 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 and thus. I'm like, wait, before you, what? Before you, I mean, like God read his post-it. No, oh yeah, I can't believe I forgot that. To tell her, you know. Oh, I forgot, I forgot the P.S. at the end that Jesus was throwing in there, you know. Right. So, you know, this woman was saying, thus saith the Lord. And the Lord didn't say what was going on was, and, and is that the woman was trying to convince us that she hears from God and that we need to be in this church because of what she said in the message. Thus saith the Lord, you're looking for a church no longer. This is where you need to be. And I'm like, well, that's obvious. You know, I mean, <laughs> it's just like uh, you're definitely not hearing from God. But like the I, reason heard why old, people... I, heard, I heard an old time preacher say they they working in the pathetic and not working in the prophetic. You know? <laughs> right. But the people people don't people don't test the spirit because they're like. Yeah what it says it, it pleases the flesh if you know i say oh thus saith the lord you know you're gonna get a a, a million dollars and the person is like all right the lord prophesies and i'm gonna get a million dollars now wait a minute now test the spirit but you don't want to because you like what it said so therefore you want to believe that it's god and then when it doesn't come to pass you blame God and you're mad instead of being mad at the devil and at the false prophet. You know what I'm saying? You take it out on God and then you still continue to follow that false prophet. Yeah. You know, yeah, you're it's, like, it's, you're like, yeah. Hey, don't, don't test the spirit. I don't, I don't want my credit run. You know, I don't want my number right. to go down. About signs of the end time, many false prophets shall arise and shall deceive many. And we were talking about how a lot of people were setting rapture dates and they always say thus saith the lord and the lord doesn't say and people don't test the spirit because they like what it says and it appeases the flesh even though god really didn't speak through that man they still accept it 
and they receive it. And then when it doesn't happen, they blame God. And the reason why they blame God instead of the prophet who was prophesying instead of prophesying when the Lord didn't really say is because people want to please appease the flesh. And, and there's a big history of this when people say, oh, you know, Donald Trump will be president and, you know, he'll be reelected and, you know, 40 days, you know, he'll be back in the office. And there's a lot of YouTube prophets and they held to their guns that, you know, God said and God did not say. But it blows my mind that people still follow these people, hook, line and sinker, hold on to every word. And, you know, more people. I have seen in the last 10, 15 years, put more faith in Nostradamus than they do Jesus in the Bible. Oh, Nostradamus said it's going to happen. Then, you know, then therefore it's, it's going to happen. But if Jesus says something's going to happen, eh, I don't know. You know, the Bible was written by man. Well, yeah. what, what is Nostradamus? There oh, you man. go. Come on now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's just, it, and that's one of the signs of the end time, brother. I mean, and, and there's a lot of them, a lot of things that people overlook because what's that, pass, what's that passage where, Je where Jesus is in the last days? He says, you know, watch out for the people. Well, there's the Christ and there's the Christ or here's this and here's that. I mean, you know, that, yeah. you know, th that that will be happening, you know, and we're definitely seeing it. And, yeah. uh, I mean, if we use Jesus and, and uh, the disciples and definitely Paul, Paul, if we use them as an example of how to have a church service, so to speak, or a ministry, I've never seen, you know, some of the crazy things that we see in church or at a, or at a convention happening with the disciples, you know. Um, right. Apostle Paul, this guy here couldn't hear well, and he's been waiting in the line three days. You know, will you walk mm -hmm. on the head and, you know, do this, that, and the other? I mean, God may direct a person to do a certain something. I ain't denying that. But, you know, I'd rather use the, the uh, template that the Lord left us with than to do stuff that's way outlandish to where you're walking up to random people and telling them about, you know, a, mis a good fortune is going to happen. They're going to have a car. They're going to have a house. They're going to have this, that, the other. Because you really got to watch that stuff. Because, you know, you you could, people put so much faith in what you're saying. And it don't happen. And then they think, you know, God's done it. You know. Right. And they're so quick to blame God. Yeah. Well, why not blame the preacher? Well, why is it always God's fault? You know, everybody blames God for everything. And, and people do that that I've talked to like, oh, well, you know, if, you know, if God was so loving, then why does he allow this and this to happen? Well, well, let me see here. You kick them out of the schools. You kick them out of your home. You probably don't even read the Bible or pray at home. I mean, chances are you don't even go to church. And then yet when a calamity happens and something like 9-11 or, or a, you know, a, a school shooting takes place, you're, you're, you're all quick to blame God that it's God's fault. You know what I mean? But yet, where where are you on Sunday morning? Yeah. Where, where's prayer in the school? You know, does not the Bible say if, you know, God does not watch the city, then he that watches it watches it in vain? In other words, oh. if God is not in it, then it's for nothing. You know, we, we always blame, we're always so quick to put the blame on God but the prophet who always says, thus saith the Lord, he gets the free pass. And, and like I was saying earlier, if, if this was biblical times, they would stone you. People in the Old Testament didn't want to be a prophet because, number one, if you told it like it was, the king would kill you. And if you didn't tell it like it was, God would kill you. Yeah, it's really a, <laughs> it's a, not a win-win situation, I don't think. Absolutely. <laughs> and then you're out running and hiding because... Jezebel saying, I'm going to kill you. You know what I'm saying? And oh, yeah. you, you are in constant jeopardy for your life because if you told the king one thing, he could have you killed. But if you didn't say what God said to tell, you know, to say, then it was your life at the hand of God. Look at that prophet who said, um, the Lord told me I can't eat and I can't drink. Oh, you know, you can eat and drink. I'm your brother. I'm a prophet just like you. Well, God said, no, go straight home the way you, you know, 
the way you came, just, you know, go back. And he didn't listen. And what happened? He was eaten by a lion on the way home after he left the man of God's house because he didn't obey the Lord. Yeah. And I don't know. There's just, there's just a lot of things that I'm seeing with the so-called church today. And, and, you know, everyone seems to think that everyone is going to heaven. But Jesus said, narrow is the way and few there be that find it. Not everybody is going to heaven that says, Lord, Lord, they're not going. But he that does the will of the father. And, and, and I think a lot of people don't realize that. They think that, you know, if they do anything, they're afraid of taking away from the finished work on the cross. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. yeah. they're, they're so afraid of works. But Jesus said, you know, and. Greater things will you do. Exactly. You know, Thank you. And, uh, well, I was thinking that and you, you said it. So it's kind of, you know. Right. But, uh, I don't know. I, th I think we just need to get back to, um, you know, obeying obeying the gospel and jesus said if you know this is how you, they shall know you are my disciple if you have love one to another and well, these signs will follow there, you, hey, there there you go right there because you know what's the scripture say to obey is better than sacrifice and then you got people that post-trib people mid-trib people they feel like they've got to sacrifice all this in order to get with jesus at the very end and the Lord's well, testimony our obedience here and now, obedience here and now, and uh, that may be an hour, it may be a couple of days. We don't know, but, yeah. you know, we should always be striving for better and striving for more, not more things, but more with God, and he's faithful, you know. Right. If he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins, how much better all the benefits that he wants to give us. I mean, I'm sure there's probably, I don't know if there's actual rooms in, in, in heaven that are like this, but I, I could just imagine just for the sake of talking, if we were to go to heaven and, and, and the Lord's like, Hey, come here, Dustin, come here, Gary. I, I got to show you something. It's been eating at me since y'all got here. I want to show you this. This is a room, Dustin, that of everything that you were supposed to be blessed with. Some of it's natural stuff. Some of it's visions of things you're supposed to accomplish for me. And here it is. And Gary, oh my goodness, look over here. Of everything that was in line for you to have, but you didn't obey me that time. And, and I couldn't do that. I had in my heart to do this, but again, disobeyed me. I had all this in line for you two guys. And because of disobedience and missing the mark, this is what you're, you know, looking at a right. room full of blessings that were supposed to be meant for you and you didn't receive. And it wasn't that he wasn't faithful, right? You got to be faithful to receive, but you gotta, you gotta be worthy of it. You know, to, uh, there's a lot of things he gives us. Definitely. We're not worthy of, I know we'll never be totally 100% worthy because why else, why else do we need Jesus? But as far as our work for God, uh, and what he's called us to, that's going to be the stuff that we're called on the carpet for one day, mm -hmm. you know, to where he's like, mm, if you would have just been at the right place at the right time, like you were supposed to be, and you had room to do it, you're supposed to have talked to a guy today, Dustin. And because you had other plans and your popcorn was going to catch on fire anyway, you, you could have, you know, saved us a whole lot of heartache and, and met with that guy and talked to him. And there was a whole thing lined up and you missed it. But no, you, you met it today, brother. Yeah. You know, don't you think the Lord ain't cheering for you? Yeah. I mean, he, we, we got an advocate with the father, you know, so to speak, you know, and uh, don't you think he's up there cheering us on and, and, and weeping over us when we don't do right. I mean, he, he is a, he's a greatest father that ever was. Thank right. God he, he's better than me. You know, I try, mm -hmm. but you know, uh, when it compares to him, yeah. Comparison. Yeah. As filthy rags in comparison, you know, believe us, believe me, he wants us to do good works and do things for him. Right. But in comparison. Oh man, you can't, 
nobody do me like Jesus, like the old song goes. Absolutely. Yeah. I think at the Bema seat, that's basically what will happen because a lot of people think, well, when you get there, it's just going to be all God showing you all the things that you did. And if it was, you know, done wrong or something, it'll be burned up by fire. But I think he'll show you, like you were saying, all the things that you could have had. You're still going to be saved, but you're going to, he's going to show you all the opportunities that you missed. And, you know, I think that everything that we had questions about at that moment, we will get the answers to. I, I think that's what will happen. That Paul, that Paul Harvey, the rest of the story. I mean, yeah. I want to get that one day. Yeah. And, you know, because that, that's one thing that's going to be so great. But then at the same time, it's a double edged sword. One part, it's great. Like, you know, the rest of the story on all the little things that kept you up at night before Google come along to answer the question. But uh, other stuff, you know, that you've had wonder, you've wondered about that Google couldn't mm -hmm. even answer. Your answers are going to be, you know, your questions are going to be answered at that moment of being in heaven. But then there's the rest of the story on different things that you knew God called you to do a certain thing. You know that there was a vision to do a certain thing. But because of flesh, you know, you didn't act on certain things. And there's going to be so many things answered. And the people, places, and things that we were supposed to be associated with that, that messed us up to to get to our destination or uh, things that we messed up on our own, you know, didn't, didn't do what the Lord wanted. And, and there could have been these great rewards and these divine appointments that we missed, you know. And the thing is, is we're not going to be the only one that missed the mark, that messed up an opportunity. Yeah. There's a lot of people, even the greatest among us, they're going to have things that, you know, they're going to be burned up by the fire. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Re things that rewards and they're going to be like, oh man, you know, my motives weren't right or when I did it or, you know, I tooted my own horn, you know, and I didn't give God the glory. And then that gets burned up. You know, there's going to be a lot of things. And, you know, the Bible does say, if think about this, Jesus said, if you give so much as a cup of water, great is your reward. Think about yeah. it. Just a cup of water. Yeah. What about, you know, some of the stuff that you do, like, you know, you buy someone to eat, something to eat or, and, you know, we don't do these things, uh, you know, to earn our salvation. That's not what I'm talking about. But these right. are the, the the works that you do because you love him and you want to please him. You know what I'm saying? These things just come natural to you. But it's like, can you imagine the reward you'll get for just for giving a word of encouragement? You know what I'm saying? Or, I mean, there's so many kinds of rewards that God is going to give you on that day. And... Yeah. It just, it let, just let me tell you, let, right, right along with what you said, let me tell you about the greatest tax return I ever had in my life. It wasn't about the money I got. It's about what we did with it. There's been times when we get tax money and we'll buy a TV or buy this or buy that or pay. Off. Most of the time we're paying off bills. We don't get to enjoy anything new. But, you know, you go out to eat, you're, you know, you're living like, you know, living large for a few days and then after the money dwindles down, it's back to bologna sandwiches and you're back. To, <laughs> God's brought you back down to the level you need to be at again. But uh, I remember one time before we spent the first penny out of our tax return. Yeah. I'm like, and, and what was funny, we weren't even at, we weren't even fully committed and in church at the time. But the Lord, it, I really felt like he impressed this. He, I was like, honey, we need to, we need to really sow into some things. We need to really bless some people. And we just need to follow the Lord on this, you know. And uh, we had divine appointments. Some of it was financial. We did give certain people money and stuff that God directed. But, you know, uh, giving people a crazy tip at a restaurant and stuff like that. And just just seeing, seeing money do something for people and, and to be a blessing to somebody, you know, I, I look back at those times and I, and it means more than it would had if I would have went and bought the new big TV that would be in the garbage somewhere because, you know, things just don't last very long. But obeying God and blessing, you know, uh, I mean, you you can't put an amount on that. Right. You know, it's like uh, I, I rewatched a movie the other night, Schindler's List, and I, I encourage anybody to watch that. Especially, you know, if, if you're over a certain age, I wouldn't let a child watch it. But uh, but 
that whole premise in that movie, you know, little by little, you know, a man that could have bought and did anything and, you know, his motives to start probably weren't right. I mean, he was trying to find a cheap way out to get laborers for his business. But at some point in that movie, and, and it's a true life story that he started to see the worth of people and how certain people look at people and they, and they think worthless and they don't matter. And there was a lot of people that he had working for him, Jewish people, that if they weren't on his list to be an employee working for him, that was the only scape clause they had. Otherwise, they'd be in a concentration camp uh, dealing with some things and, and probably be killed, you know, because of it. But, you know, and he got called on the carpet a, a few times in that movie where you're telling me that this guy with one arm is your most valued person in the, on that shift doing whatever he's doing. Hey, you know, I'll give him, you know, he, he, he's like, no, he, he, yeah, he's, he's one of the best, you know? And, and, uh, <laughs> He got a one-armed guy, probably some blind people, no telling, and and then had some children work. And he's like, well, who else can you get? A, I can't get my hand up in there to do whatever, but their hands are perfect, you know. And uh, yeah. just had all these excuses, but his excuses saved a lot of lives. I think 12, 1,200, wasn't it? 1,200 Jews wow. were saved, you know, and that last lines of that movie where, you know, the, the man who who saves one life has saved the whole world and in, 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 in it's entire, you know? And then there's where the tears start shedding when you watch that movie, because he's like, did I really need this? Did I really need that? There's two more people. There's, there's 10 more people there. One more person, you know, and probably live the rest of his life thinking, man, I didn't do enough. And honestly, he probably could do a whole lot more. You know, but thank God he at least did that. You know, an yeah. entire, I think, 6,000 Jew descendants since then, maybe. I think that's one of the things I was reading. I mean, 6,000 people descended, you know, and were alive, you know, because wow. of one man's, you know, obedience, if you will. Right. I mean, uh, God will use the foolish things to compound the wise, and he'll even use somebody that's on the Nazi, in the Nazi party. Absolutely. Find a profiteer, and God will take that whole situation and be like, no, my people aren't going to die out. Yeah. This was before Israel was a state, correct? Yeah. You know, you know, I mean, I'm telling you, you know, I, I've watched that movie. That's probably the third time I watched it all the way through that movie and uh, Schindler's List. But I tell you, each time it's like little things pop out and you know, a lot of the news right now, anti-Semitic stuff going on and, you know, oh, yeah. and and Christians, you know, I mean, uh, Absolutely. The, football, the, the football player that, you know, is getting blasted because of his yeah. pro-Catholic, you know, message to mm -hmm. a Catholic school. And but if he was pro-Muslim or anti-God or doing something else, you wouldn't ever hear about it. You know, ain't that the truth? He would he would be awarded a medal of honor of some sort by a president and people from overseas just pouring in, you know, to encourage this guy. And here you've got a guy that's standing up for God some way or another, standing up for God. And people want to spit on him and want to call for his resignation. It's just like in that movie Schindler's List where they were bringing all those people out of the ghetto, all them Jewish people, and these people standing on the sideline, go home, Jews, get out of here, you know, la, 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 you know. And I'm thinking, man, that's today. We're not mm -hmm. putting people in boxcars yet, but yeah. I can see how uh, the tribulation, it's going to be hard for you if you're left behind. And what's tragic, you knew enough truth to be lost and to be left behind, but you might be part of the remnant that gets saved because of, you know, the day of the rapture is going to be so many knees bowed and so many tongues confessing Jesus. Right. But and the thing is, go, they got to go through them seven years and yeah. try to keep their head about it, so to speak. But they'll, at the end, it's either cut your head off or, or denounce, yeah. you know, and they'll blame God if they're left or, behind. Yeah, or hide. And then there's, yeah, yeah there's that too. And 
because you know being on that edge of truth right now and choosing the wrong way you oh, yeah. have seven years of regret if you uh <laughs> you know if you don't turn to a reprobate mind and and you just totally think you're in the right for denouncing god but man you know well you know if you if you read throughout the book of revelation after we're gone it says that they repented not that means yeah all the things that god pours out on them for i'm talking about the ones that are left behind yeah it says they repented not their hearts are so hardened now are some going to repent or is it just all's not going to repent <sighs> you know brother i don't really know um i know there's going to be some that are going to make it because the bible says basically all those whose names that are not written in in the book um you know they're gonna get their head cut off they're gonna have to there's there's gonna be a lot of martyrs there's gonna be some that are just gonna during that time you know they're they're gonna betray one another just like it was yeah. you know and it, Schindler's it, list. It, it, uh, yeah i mean yeah when they show those people hiding i mean mm -hmm. hiding in places you couldn't imagine i mean hiding in an outhouse in the hole you know hiding underneath the bed they flip the bed over and here they are you know yeah. found a way to hide inside a bed or in a in a piano or whatever i mean but there was no this. hiding there was no hiding they found so right many people you know? and that's exactly what i was just going to say is that with modern technology with drones and you know the technology we have today yeah. you're not going to be able to hide the antichrist he's going to hunt you down and all these people who think they're going to prep and you know they're going to uh yeah. bushcraft and you know go out into hunker down out there in the woods and you know escape no they'll go right for you first and the bible says that they that you know live by the sword will die by the sword there's going to be three types of people in the last days if you carry a gun you're going to be you're going to be you're going to get shot okay you live by the sword you die by the sword then there's going to be those who try to prep, who can prep, who will uh, make it to the end. But it's going to be rough, and you're going to run out of food most likely unless you know you can team up with other people who are willing to share. And then you're going to have the third group who can't afford to prep, who won't buy a gun. You're going to get caught thrown in a FEMA camp or a fun camp, as Hillary would say it, and you're going to be given the option. You're going to either take this mark of the beast and or you're going to get your head cut off and you know those are the three types of people and i, I just know that it's coming and i don't want <laughs> i don't want to be here <laughs> you know what i'm saying no because if it was bad for the jews during the holocaust i couldn't imagine yeah how it'd be for us you know for if 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 we did not know and we're left behind Think about this. Imagine. Couldn't if imagine. A, if a prisoner breaks out of prison and he's on the run, you know how easy it is for them to find him? Think about that. When you are public enemy because you believe contrary to what the New World Order believes, mm -hmm. and you're running for your life. I don't know if you've ever seen those movies like Left Behind or you know Judgment Day. And there's some truth to those videos. I don't believe in all of it and how it all pans out. But um, there are some truth, and you're going to be hunted, and people are going to turn you in. You're not going to know who to trust. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of people, they, they're going to take the mark because they don't, you know, it, it's sad. Yeah. They're going to take the mark because they believe. I don't want to say this. You know, I'm trying to. I'm trying to be careful here because you know, you people always get offended. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I got a few things I could say to get get people around it, but uh, well, a lot of a lot of the once saved always saved people. Because I do not believe in once saved always saved. I don't believe that's biblical. I believe that there's a lot of scripture to uh, disprove the once saved always saved. But if you're in that camp and you believe in once saved always saved, that's fine. Okay, I get you know. It, that's between you and God. And, um, but there's a lot of people 
And I've heard they say, well, you can take the mark and still be saved. I've heard John MacArthur say, you can take the mark of the beast and still be saved. He said that over his pulpit. Mm -hmm. Darn near floored me. I thought, I said, well, wait, wait a minute, minute. That's not what the Bible says. But there's people who believe once you're saved, it doesn't matter what you do. You're going to, you're going to make it. You know what I mean? And it's like, I don't, I don't want to offend the people who are once saved, always saved. And, you know, but the, the, the honest truth is, is that's not Bible. Okay. There's nowhere in the Bible that teaches once you're saved, you're always saved. No one can pluck you out of the father's hand, but you can walk away yourself. You know, Bible says many are going to say unto him that day, Lord, Lord. And he'll say, I never knew you. Yeah. And he talks there, about that's the, the, that, that, see, that's the thing right there. And I was watching someone the other day and they were talking about this same subject and they made a very interesting point And I've said it myself is that if someone says, says they're saved and they, you know, they're connected to Jesus and they're this, that, and the other, and they, they're, they're quote unquote saved, like, like, you know, like we believe. And, all of a sudden something turns and and they go out on some crazy rampage there's always a worst case scenario situation you know that people give i'm like this i don't believe they had it to begin with because there's a lot of people like you said they'll say lord lord but the lord don't know this person you know uh just because you put on the mcdonald's uniform doesn't mean you know how to make my hamburger you know that's true uh, you know well, and also though the Bible, I don't think, honestly, a lot of people over there know how to make a hamburger, but uh, <laughs> they've been working there five years, barely know. But well, uh, but I was I reading today, real quick. Yeah, go ahead. Look, I was reading today where it talked about the natural branch. Don't boast against the natural branch. You who are grafted in, because he can remove you as well. You know what I'm saying? And that's what I was reading in Romans, talking about the Gentile, which is the wild branch being grafted into the tree, the olive tree. And just as the Jews were cut off, so can we be cut off. And there's a lot of scripture that I, that I have read that goes against though, the once saved, always saved. And the people believe they were saved. You know what I'm saying? There's a, there's a lot of people and they use that scripture, you know, sealed unto the day of redemption. And I, I understand that, but there's a lot of scripture. Wouldn't it be like this? That that verse is true, but there are certain things that has to be on your end. I mean, absolutely. Ag agreeing with something is one thing. Agreeing that Jesus was alive and different things you agree upon. I mean, we can acknowledge somebody all day long, but if, there's a difference between knowing about Bill Gates and being related to Bill Gates. Now, my right. last name's Gates. I'm not related to that, Billy, you know. But anyway, <laughs> you know, there's a difference between being related and knowing them knowing you uh, right. and just just throwing, you know, name dropping all day long to kind of have a connection. I think that's what a lot of people are in a situation where they feel like the, if they name drop Jesus enough in the good way, because Lord knows you go down the road with some people that are having some you know, uh, road rage, uh, they're name dropping too, but a whole different type of name dropping, you know, but the ones that name drop Jesus all day long, they think they've got a relationship. They're connected, but they don't mm -hmm. have that relationship. They really don't. I think right. that's the difference. That's the difference is that you either, you're either, you either have it or you don't. Right. And I don't, I just don't believe a lot of people that, that go to an extreme and it's always the extreme where they were saved and they went robbed a bank and they did this and they did that. And they're still going to heaven. I'm like, Ugh. yeah, I don't believe they, I don't believe they had it, but right. I'm not their judge. You know, I'm not anybody, I ain't judging nobody, but I am, I am kind of seeing whether or not that fruit tree is an apple tree or an orange tree, or it ain't even a tree. That's just a bush that, on a hill. It looks like a tree, you know? And uh, I think that's kind of where we're at is that I don't believe you either got it or you don't. You know. So, yeah, you know, that's exactly what I was thinking. You know, there's a lot of people who they, they believe in this. 
once saved, always thing, saved thing. And I've heard them say this. Well, you know, five minutes for the rapture, you know, you can go out, rob a bank, uh, you know, shoot someone, give God the middle finger, and you'll still go on, and you'll still go on the rapture. Wow. And I'm thinking, what? Wow. He's coming what back for maturity? a holiness. What kind, of matur- what kind of maturity level do these people have that would say certain things? I mean, the best I've be ever holy. heard. Yeah, the best the I've ever heard. Just be the Lord. The best I've ever heard was an old preacher, and he was he was he was trying to answer that question. And it it wasn't at church. It was just it was at church, but it was in the you know in the foyer. And he was like, I had somebody ask me today if they if you know what will it take to lose your salvation? And he he totally turned that thing around. He's like, if that if that over there is the cliff. And you won't know how close you can get to it before you can fall off. He says, that's not the question we need to be asking. How, how close can I get to heaven? You know, how, cl- how close can I get to God? How much can I do for God and, and still stand to even be on this earth? You know, those are the kind of questions we need to be asking. But no, we want to know, you know, will this get me in or will this get, you know, we're always asking, will this get me out? Will this get me out? If you got to ask the question, I don't think you got it, you know. Right. Well, my whole thing is this. The, yeah. the thing is, is when people teach one saved, always saved, the other saying is once you confess the Lord and you believe on him and you're saved, then now you can live however you want and there's no consequences. Yeah. You don't you don't have to change. You don't have to be separate from the world. There's no need for sanctification and separation. There's no need for holiness. There's no, you know what I'm saying? There's no need for change on you. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. if you do, then automatically it's works and it's taking away from the finished work on the cross. Yeah. <laughs> what? It's it. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, I, I'm right there with you, Dustin. And I think if people really thought it through, um, here's the thing. I think a lot of the questions that we, we've been at churches where they're so hard pressed on holiness that they don't give people a chance to even think or breathe. And they right. think, well, shoot, if I can't do all that, I can't even, I can't even attempt to even live for God. Right. So that situation scares them off. The other, the other situation welcomes them in, but it doesn't give them the truth to make it all the way. You know, if, if that makes any sense. And I think there, there needs to be a marriage of the two, not, not saying that the people that are hard pressed on holiness need to, uh, I'll let your hair down every once in a while. That's not what I'm saying. I think both camps need to learn something that we are still human. We're still, we still got, you know, we're, we're still a foul old, you know, dirty old sinner, you know, with a sin nature. And we're trying to do things better for God and to get closer to God. And we're never going to be a 100% in the state of perfection. Right. But we're always striving for it. And when we do mess up, I don't know about their Holy Spirit, but my Holy Spirit knocks my hind in. He mm-hmm. gets the, he gets the old hickory switch off the tree like my mama used to do. And you wish to God you never done that, you know, again. You know, you never do that again. And, you know, I thank God he will come after you and he will punish you, you know, and he'll get you on the straight and narrow. And if you don't have that type of relationship, it, you know, a good father will correct you know, right. and he's a good father. So therefore he's going to correct. And he, he he's right there. He's there a whole lot telling me how to do what I need to do. And if you were to go out and rob a bank, believe me, I don't think I can get out the door with the ski mask because the Lord would have already whooped me before I even got to the car, you know, and uh, I'm too, I'm too fat to get away from a, you know, somebody at a bank robbery anyway. But, uh, you know, they just, Follow the Krispy Kreme trail. You'll find him, you know, but, uh, you know. Well, the Bible talks joke, about but... being transformed and the renewing of your mind, you know. Yeah. Come out from among them and be separate. Touch not the unclean thing and I yeah, will really. receive you. There, God demands holiness. He wants, yeah. we are supposed to be a peculiar people set apart. We are in the world, but not of the world. We are not to conform yeah. to the image of this world. And people are teaching people that it, you can just live however you want and it's okay. Yeah. Folks, no. it's not okay. No, it's not. It's not. And it's no. dangerous to believe that. And mm-hmm. well, I don't know, but moving on, I just, you know, I just, I just see a lot of people claiming to be Christian, but they don't 
they're not Christ-like. They cuss and swear like a, worse than a sailor. Some of the people, you know, the devil worships them. And, you know, it's like, whoa, hold up. Because, I, I mean, I've been by so-called Christians cussed out in my comment section and the slander just ripped to shreds because you, I said you mean that you mean that woman was on your page too? She was on mine. I tell you, well, I've been you, called the I've been called bewitched. You name it, I've been called it, man. Wow. I, I'm just like one step away from being the, the 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 man of sin, the son of perdition himself. But yeah. what I mean, it's like a lot of these people, are like, oh my goodness, did you know we get left behind? This dust is the Antichrist, you know. He, he's teaching that once they'd always say it's not biblical. And it's kind of like they demonize you. And, and because yeah. they don't want to be holy, they don't want to change. They think they can just live however they want and still, you know, walk right on into heaven. And God's just going to look the other way. <laughs> he's right. not folks. Right. Yeah. I don't know. But I just wanted to bring that up because that's, a you know, a lot of what I'm seeing today. And, you know, God doesn't want you to stay as you are. It's come as you are, but don't stay come as you are. Yeah. Right. Come as you are, but don't stay as you are. Allow there to be a work within you. And a conviction is not your enemy. It's your friend. Mm -hmm. Conviction oh, yeah. is your friend. It's your best friend. Allow conviction. Mm -hmm. And if you feel something, don't brush it off. Embrace it. Mm -hmm. I mean, your, your body's a temple of the Holy Ghost. And if you have God living in you and you just file the temple, him will God destroy. He's no respecter of person. <laughs> you know? Oh, yeah. Um, well, brother, you got anything you want to add? And um, you want to end end the video tonight? I'll let you give the final thoughts. And Oh, okay. If there's anything uh, on. Just put on your work clothes, people. I mean, uh, we still have a lot of gardening to do. You know, uh, need to make sure your your sickle and all your different things that you use to uh, plant and sow. Uh, and I'm talking about spiritually now. Some people are already going out to their outbuilding. Don't pause this and go to your outbuilding. I'm saying you need to be laboring, you know, and trying to pull other people in. Just because we see the storm brewing doesn't mean it's going to start to rain right now. It could. But, hey, we need to be found faithful, you know. Right. Uh, the Lord can come back at any second, any moment. Uh, you know, his ways aren't our ways. And like I've said on some videos I've posted recently, you know, God forbid I, I get so heavenly minded worrying about my own escape plan that the guy next to me that I'm supposed to be witnessing to, he doesn't make it because I'm, I'm so heavenly minded. I'm no earthly good, you know. Uh Earthly good doesn't mean worldly, you know, earthly right. good means doing some goodness from him here on this earth. And we need to be found faithful, folks. That's what I'm that's what God's telling me right now. And uh, it's not an audible voice. It's just something he puts down in my spirit. And that's that's right where he he has me right now, you know, and uh, that's just that's just what I'm walking in right now as a state of trying to obey him every day and trying to get closer to him. Uh, Cause like you were saying about uh, people that think it's just a, a get out of jail free card. Uh, don't have a rude awakening. Cause man, you totally missed this. You know, uh, he's wanting you to be a, a person that stands out, you know, and he ain't talking about your looks cause Lord knows I stand out all by myself, but uh, the spirit standing out in you. So I'll right. get you laughing. But anyway, <laughs> I'm sorry. You know, God's called us to be the church. I've just turned it into a mega church, you know. Right. <laughs> well, that's good, man. You know, Jesus is coming. Whether it's tomorrow or, you know, a year from now, we just got to be ready. Got to make sure we're ready. And, uh, well, we'll see you guys next week. Thanks again for tuning into End Time Generation. Till next time, God bless.